Creating a data architecture involves a lot of moving parts. And this is true even if you're a really small or one person data team. So it's understandable that sometimes things get a little bit out of sync. This is something I notice happens more often with a lot of DBT based projects. So what I'd like to do in this video is kind of just get back to basics a little bit and talk about how to think through aligning your DBT project with your database and with your whole architecture and trying to put the different pieces together. And my hope is that by talking about this, it might help you rethink your current design, or if you're starting from scratch to give you an idea of how to go about this. So at a high level, this is an end to end data architecture visual. And what I like to call it is the simple stack because it's pretty straightforward, pretty bare bones, but it's really all you need most of the time to get started and it can scale really well for you. So let's just talk about some high level concepts and then we're gonna get into DBT specifically. So on the left here, I read it from left to right. You have your data sources on the left. You're bringing them in through some fashion, through some tools, through some custom scripts into a centralized landing zone. I like to keep it all within the same database server a lot of times. So imagine this is a database server and you have a dedicated database called raw in this case and individual schemas for each source system. So you have your sources loaded here. Then you use a tool like DBT to transform them into another database that follows a set of modeling, some sort of modeling pipeline. This can include a staging schema, a warehouse where you have your facts and dimensions, and then data marts for external facing reports. You could also rethink this into terms of medallion architecture. Sometimes people focus on that with a bronze, silver, and gold type of design. The goal here is not to get too lost in that, but more about thinking as we'll see, how to align this with your project and just making sure you're consistent. And then down here, we have different environments as well. That's gonna be outside the scope of this particular video, but that's what these represent down here. So two databases, we got raw and analytics. So with that in mind, let me bring over an example of what this could look like in the database. And then we're gonna get into DBT itself. Again, the goal here is to kind of help you think through these and put the pieces together. So we have our strategy at a high level. Now here's an example of two different databases in my Snowflake instance, but it could be any tool. I'm calling it KDS raw and KDS analytics. I had to prefix it because otherwise there's too many other objects in this database in this database server. So if we look at raw, that's the equivalent of having this guy right here. So we have raw and individual schemas for different sources that I'm using, for example, YouTube analytics. And then next we have analytics. So moving it over to this concept over here. So we have staging, warehouse, marts, and then I have a dev schema here. I'd also typically have a CI schema, uh, but that's not included here. And then snapshots outside the scope of this discussion, but just a separate place to put data. The idea here is we have different databases, two databases, individual schemas that align with this strategy. Cool. All right. So now let's talk about what that looks like in a project. Let's now take it to the next level deeper. Here's the DBT project. So we have a DBT project and First, let's start, let's start with the models. When you look at the models directory, a lot of this will sound pretty straightforward, but for some reason, teams miss this sometimes. In my opinion, the best thing you can do for organization, for a long-term success really with DBT is to align your models directory with your database design as much as you can. So for example, if I put these next to each other, we have staging here in our database and staging here under models as a directory and all of the models are gonna go into there. Same for warehouse and marts, warehouse and marts. Now the dev schema is a separate workflow where everything gets put into one schema by the way it's designed currently. But the idea here is we're aligning this together. And this might seem obvious to you, but sometimes some teams need a reminder of that because they'll start building their project in one way and then try to deploy them in another way. And I just think it gets confusing over time and it doesn't scale very well. So if you can keep these in sync with each other, it's gonna make your life a lot easier as you develop your DBT project. And one of the other things we can look at here, I know I'm zoomed in a bit, is if you look at the DBT project.yaml, it just keeps everything really easy. It keeps everything really simple. So when we're creating our models configuration, everything in these different layers can be configured together. This is actually should be Marts. So for example, this is going to be everything in the staging directory, everything in the warehouse directory, and everything in the Marts directory. And we can set these one time, everything goes into the March schema, warehouse schema, how they're materialized, which again, aligns back to what we have in here. It just keeps it easy and it's very clear. You don't have to think too hard about what's going on. And so hopefully that makes sense. A lot of times I think we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught something. And so hopefully this is a good reminder on that. The other thing you might be wondering, maybe if you're new to DBT or just need a refresher, 
is what about these raw data sources here? What happens with that? So let's talk about what the difference between the raw and the analytics are here and how that relates back to dbt so i actually got these little guys down here let me bring these up so when it comes to dbt there are two important concepts we have sources and we have models a source represents in the purest form the raw data sources coming from the source system there's no transformations it's not the result of any sort of modeling or transformation customization it's a pure source lookup it's a reference it's a pointer to the source table and so when you actually go back to the dbt project if you go to a sources configuration file what you're doing is creating a pointer to a source and when we say source again we're talking about i got a lot of screens going on here we're talking about ideally in a perfect world the raw data sources again this is something that teams sometimes will rebuild things in different ways and have sources pointing to what really are models and that's why it's important to understand the difference so a source uses this configuration in dbt and it ideally is referencing a raw data table it's a pointer it's just going to compile the code based on what you create it for here on the other hand we then have models and the idea of a model in dbt is pretty much everything over here everything that then gets turned into some sort of customization so if we look here now on the models file when we have a models configuration this is something that's going to be deployed and this is one of the core aspects of dbt because you're deploying something based on you know some logic that you've applied some custom sql and because of the different ways dbt works you can use that ref function and it will create the lineage it'll know what comes first and how to compile it in different environments all that stuff but that is what a model is so you have sources and then you have models sometimes i'll see teams they'll they'll build something they'll actually have sources and then they'll create create a model but then they'll create this as another source yaml file somewhere and be pulling from it again so it's almost like they have sources popping up in different places as some sort of workaround and this is just a reminder to try to avoid that if you can there's always edge cases for things but in a in an ideal scenario sources are your true data sources and everything after that is a model if things start getting out of sync there I think it's a good time to reflect on what are you doing maybe something is off a little bit or maybe you truly do need to do something like that but usually i find that's not the case all right so let's now just bring this back home to recap we have a high level architecture design you have your raw data and your analytics transform data when you re relate this to dbt you have sources and you have models and when you build your dbt project you want to align it with this design so we have our different layers of staging warehouse and marts within here we have sources and models and sources represent that raw data table i also will mention here that it's a good idea to create subdirectories here based on the same thing over here so you would have subdirectories based on different sources to help keep yourself organized and then translating this all back to an actual database we now have raw which you could think of as again the sources so these are sources in the raw data table and then everything gets transformed as models in the analytics database so everything in here would be considered a model your different schemas representing the same directories here and so everything now becomes connected and makes sense together and hopefully now that has helped you think through some of these ideas here it's something that may seem obvious when i point it out like this but as you start building it's natural for things to shift away you get reprioritized and different things hopefully you found this helpful and it'll help you rethink what you're doing or just be a good reminder of maybe something that's going well but either way thanks as always for watching and i'll see you at the next video